Welcome to Cairo Author Insights. This is an incredibly humbling experience, an incredible opportunity for us to grow and learn. I am with Dr. Kelly Miller. Welcome, Dr. Kelly. It's great to speak with you again. Thank you for having me. It's You're ready to go to bed, and I just got up, so. Well, that's the... the Hopefully, the, we'll, we'll be at our best. We will be at our best, <laughs> because every conversation with you elevates me to be totally excited, totally energized, and totally ready. Um, for those not familiar with why I am so excited, Dr. Kelly Miller is not only a 1980 graduate of Logan Health University of Health Sciences, where he received his Doctor of Chiropractic degree, and later on gained his certificate in industrial and occupational health from Northwestern Chiropractic College in 1991. It was during the 1990s he worked as an ergonomic safety consultant and aftercare doctor for Food Barn, uh, Balls Price Chopper, and 20th Century in the Kansas the metropolitan area. These things, great background and preparation for what is going to unfold as an epic chiropractic and neuroscience degree. It wasn't only the uh, neuroscience of chiropractic and chiropractic background that allowed him to be such an authority and expert. It's background in acupuncture, functional diagnostic medicine. He's uh, trained in the Malilo method in childhood neurocognitive development uh, with clinical practices now covering over 41 years of experience and having treated over 15,000 patients is an international lecturer on genetic, nutritional and hormonal considerations related to heart health, as well as the author of seven health related, several health related books, seven in fact. Um, Dr. Kelly Miller um, is the founder of Health, um, health and Restoration. And in 2013, based on his belief that the natural synergistic approach to healthcare is the optimal approach to addressing the health issue, issues, um, began you know, working with people to transform the health and quality of life. But it is what we're talking about today here. You know, I don't know if you're watching this, you'll see a whole lineup here of books. Um, I've got a range of them. You know, is your environment stressing you out? 13 seats to optimum healthy aging, micronutrient testing. And this one here, this tome, one of my absolute favorite books of all time, Saving Your Brain. This is a tome, and I didn't just read this. I devoured this, and we're going to talk a lot about this book because this is an insight, um, I think, not only in authorship, but we're going to talk about scholarship and its ability to extend your expertise. So with that background in mind, thank you again, Dr. Kelly. I appreciate you taking time out of your very, very busy schedule. I really appreciate that. But let's start with a really simple question. All right. Why so many books? Well, um that's, that's, that's a longer story than we can get into in 15 minutes. But anyway, I, I had to take a sabbatical for a while. I, I, was, I sold a practice. I was in between practice. And um, I really, I took 10 months and I was just uh, parked by a river um, every day and I was just writing. So basically, I had several books in mind and I just started writing. And uh, I wrote, I wrote, and I wrote what I knew, what I found, you know, to be in the practice, what to be true. And then I went and I found the references for it. So basically that's how I wrote the book. So uh, um, the saving your brain was actually the last one. Um, I did a fellowship in, with Paul Tai in Sao Paulo, Brazil on uh, aging and regenerative medicine. That was the first book, 13 Secrets. And basically all that background, um, drove me to the brain. I mean, basically, I just, that was the last said. I, I, and I was having problems with my own brain. And I played rugby for 21 years and played center. And I probably was involved in 10,000 tackles, either receiving or, or delivering. So I had a few concussions. I had a couple of car crashes also. And uh, I was having some problems with my memory, recall, different things. Um, kind of some, a lot of agitation issues. And so I started uh, searching for it. And um, so basically I was looking for, uh, I was concerned that I was you know, gonna get Alzheimer's or, or you know, dementia. And um, so I just started searching the natural things. I already, it didn't take me very long to find out as far as allopathic approach, there's nothing out there. I mean, there's no drugs. You know, the most common drug they give is like a, you know, we, we talk about SSI inhibitors for depression and anxiety, which is basically a drug that blocks the body's natural ability to reabsorb or break down serotonin. So it just keeps serotonin. So 
I, I'm just a stupid chiropractor. I go, well, if someone has low serotonin, why don't we give them some nutrition or do some things to make their own serotonin? We can go out in the sunshine for an hour a day and we'll make more serotonin. So anyway, I was just looking for different uh, approaches, but going back to the Alzheimer's, they do a, a drug that keeps acetylcholine from broken down. Okay, well, we can do way better than that. We can, we can help people make more acetylcholine, come on. So it's not even, um, I, I mean, really the, the, there's nothing in allopathic for that. So we, we really have approach, you know, every time we adjust the brain, there's some really cool research out uh, just on, on the prefrontal cortex. You know, our prefrontal cortex is where we make decisions. All the sensory comes in and this is where we got to, you know, make the decisions. Uh, I call it the should I or shouldn't I say or do the, the, this, these things. And we have a lot of problems with that in today's world and in all ages. But um, when we adjust, it affects the prefrontal cortex. When patients have chronic pain, it breaks down, atrophies the prefrontal cortex. So this is a really important part of the part of that inner therapy that we try to address. But anyway, that's why we got into the book. Um, I did the research in it initially, and this kept adding and adding. It took about three years. My sister edited it. And that's why the reference. So basically, I, I had a premise. Okay, what about nutrition? Does nutrition help the brain? Okay, what is what does the literature say about nutrition? Okay, I had these natural uh, devices like the brain tap. Oh, brain tap is an audiovisual trainer. Okay, what's the research say about audiovisual training? Well, it's been around for, since the 60s. I mean, it's it's very well validated. Um, so I just went through all these different uh Pulsed electromagnetic frequency. Okay, what can that do for the brain? So all these different things, neurotransmitters, hormone function, all the different things, all these that we have tools as natural practitioners that, that we can use, what can we use to help someone's brain? And um, so I found, I go to stress affect the brain. Yeah, okay, we get stressed. I went through a lot of stress, you know, like all of us have in life a lot. We're all under a lot of stress right now. These are hard times. Uh, you know, stress will produce cortisol. Cortisol will affect the, the hippocampus, short-term memory. Uh, will destroy it. The, it'll actually the, uh, destroy the neurons. Okay, what can we do? You know, breathing. We can take different supplements. We can stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, you know, down-regulate the... So, so that's all basic chiropractic. I think... I kind of think this is where we should be teaching uh you know for for chiropractors of the future because we have so many brain-based problems now in, in our world i love that and i i, I love what you just I'm, I'm going to revisit what you just said because i'm grabbing out the uh the, the, the table of contents when we go through that but coming back to that so you're you're feeling like uh, and, and you're talking about after the you've written your the 13 secrets to optimal um, optimal aging you you know you're, you've been wonderfully successful in practice and then you feel like you know you things aren't quite right with your thinking so you're on this superior sabbatical and you start thinking all right i've got to get my brain better medicine hasn't got an answer for me the, the functional medicine chiropractic the principles of health that i've worked with in practice really offer, uh, offer us an opportunity so i'm going to dig deep into the science behind that and so that's why when we go through here you like it starts off with the problem and then you go into you know deeper analysis of the problem and you talk about all the aspects of brain change brain atrophy cardiovascular disease in, um, and alzheimer's insulin resistance alzheimer's um, ems and the change to brain emotional stress and then you look at all of the solutions where you, as you said you started to go through step by step all of the things you can do as a practitioner that you may already be doing as a practitioner or additional adjuncts that you can bring in to be able to bring about the brain-based changes and therefore saving your brain, which is a, a wonderful way of spelling out, you know, complete healing for your brain. And that meant, as I said, you wrote it and then you researched it. And I think that's a beautiful way of analyzing the writing of a book or the creating of a program is saying, what do we know? What can we do? And how can I get more deep into my knowledge and understanding to offer authority and you know and demonstrate expertise because really now i want to carry this conversation because as i said this book is a tome it's not it is super thick and it is filled with literally hundreds of references so anyone can talk 
about a approach that they have to care in terms of, okay, I, I'm a chiropractor, I adjust. What's the science behind adjustment? I use some postural changes. I, what's the science behind that? But the ability to then put it together in a coherent and structured way, I'd love, you said, well, I did some research and I got my sister to edit it, but I'd love to just go a little bit deeper because the level of research of this book is encyclopedic. And I would love for people to, who might say, well, I can't research a book. I can write off the top of my head. I could do a, a, a weekend workshop or I could even do a lay lecture, but I'm not a researcher. So I'd love for you to extend into how you took the knowledge that you have and that everyone have in their own mind for what they do and brought the depth of research that you brought to this book. Well, it's just an evolution. You know, I'm, I'm getting old, I'm 65. So I've been in practice for 41 years. So you just, you pick up things. So I just, I've used every thing I ever learned. And um, I started out as a straight chiropractic. I just did adjustments and I did nutrition. Started out a standard process. I mean, that's, so I just, I just grew. I just came from a family of educators and I just, you know, for to better yourself, you got, more education that's just kind of was in my dna but the you know it's out there you really uh, you know we we could get off in the science of what's what's being happening in the world today and and what we're being told there's no science behind it i can tell you there's there's, there's plenty of other signs to to differ from uh, the status quo but there's research out there to support everything we do the principles of chiropractic every time we adjust the spine it affects the brain for 72 hours when we put someone on a brain tap it affects the nerve brain and nervous system positively for 72 hours so there's a reason we should see a patient two or three times a week because we're updating their brain and um, then there's you know there's different things from that book we're, we're going to have an another book and we're going to talk about the hemispheric model and of of uh, weakness on the left and right side and the different um names of diagnoses that are people are called i don't you know when i deal with brain people are so classified so much that it's it's kind of a negative thing you know i'm add i'm adhd i'm autistic i'm whatever so we don't we don't we just say you have a brain imbalance okay we all have strengths we all have weaknesses and we're going to find your weaknesses and we're going to shore them up and that's basically the approach and we use everything we use chiropractic we use acupuncture we use nutrition we use herbs we use homeopathy we use uh neurotransmitter support we use hormone support we use pmf we use multiple to tools like which most of us don't know things like interactive metronome which sets the, the tone but um it, there, there's there's so much we can do and uh as so it's been a process i mean and and there's so much knowledge coming about this so it's a never it makes it fun because you can learn something every week you'll learn something from your patients or an observation or talk to another colleague or go to seminars just like this, this and you you know you can uh, improve the quality of other people's lives yeah it's true it's absolutely so profound that we can do that and what i'm also hearing you say is when you when, when somebody comes into your practice, you have a, a, a protocol that you use. And again, every chiropractor will have their own approach. And you've got a very diverse approach because of your acupuncture background, your functional medicine background, your nutritional background, and you add the beauty and the gift of chiropractic to that. You have this diverse approach. And so what I'm hearing you say is you've looked at everything that you do as a protocol within practice and said, what's the research behind and, and the support for what we do to get the results we get? And so you've brought that knowledge and then the research that supports that knowledge together as your book. Is that a fair way of looking at how when somebody reads your book, they'd be able to then say, so this is an approach to saving my brain, to improving my brain health that Dr. Kelly takes before they even get in to see you or before they even begin understanding the work that you do? Yeah, one of the things we did, we have heart rate variability and we have something called a device called the Max Pulse, but basically it does four different functional cardiovascular functions. And one of them being arterial elasticity, which is probably one of the biggest predictors of uh, long term cardiovascular health or a potential problem with a stroke or a heart attack or something like that. And so my premise was if what we were doing 
it should positively affect the autonomic nervous system. We should be have better balance. We should have more parasympathetic. And by the way, 80, 90% of everybody that walks in the door is sympathetic dominant. dominant. So this is one of the reasons if, if you, anybody listening out there has been in practice for 40 years, we don't, it's harder to get a positive change in a patient in today's world than it was in 1980s. I didn't know anything in 1980. I came out and you get miracle, you know, you get a miracle. It's, it's tougher to get miracles these days. You got to work a lot harder at it. Uh, but we did for two years. So everything we did with a patient before and after we, we documented with um, heart rate variability and the max pulse. So if it didn't, you know, it's kind of like the 80, 20 rule, whatever, if it didn't, if it didn't, and the vast majority of time, 80% or plus make a positive changes, then we just didn't do that anymore. So we just, so it was kind of an experimentation observation um, protocol. And I, I was fortunate I was starting, basically I sold my first practice and I was kind of starting all over. So I, I, I you know, I was like, what am I gonna do when I grow up here? So I had the opportunity and the time to really build from scratch and, you know, most of us getting out of school, we feel stressed. We have student loans. We have to think we got to get volume up there. But really, it was, uh, you know, seeing 10 patients a day or something like that. Um, that, was a, that was a big day when we're doing brain and we see 15 people a day. If I have, you know, one or two staff, it's a pretty, you know, sometimes we'll see 20 people a day. It's a it's pretty busy in a, in a small area. And, you know, in our, and there's lots of guys have huge facilities out there, but we have, like at our brain clinic, we probably have like 800, you know, 800,000 square feet. And, um, you know, we can have four people going through different people. We have some people in neuro, we have a couple of neurofeedback rooms. We can have up to four people in our brain room. We have like six stations set up so we can work in that. Um, so it's, it doesn't take a lot of space and actually, you know, uh, getting investing into things. I've always liked technology. I used to have three acuspinas back in the day when uh, decompression came on. Those are $125,000 each. So you, you can have a heck of a brain clinic for, for about half that uh, amount of money. So yeah, it's something I would just encourage doctors to try to do different things. And we, and we give advice on that, say, okay, what's the first piece of equipment we could come in? Okay, well, how would this impact? How can we use this, integrate it? Okay, what's the next thing we can do? What's the next thing we can do? And you can slowly, um, you know, it's, it's a learning experience. So you, you learn a new, you got a new thing and you test it and you go, hey, this adds value. So let's use this. Okay, and we, then we go to the next thing we had. And then after a while, then we have, a half a dozen, 10 or 10 different tools in our belt that we can do on a different day based on the patient's deficiencies and weakness. And, and for those not familiar with Dr. Kelly, he's been unreasonably uh, humble here. The expertise he brings to brain-based chiropractic and brain-based care is world-class level of understanding. And I've had the opportunity to look into his practice and his protocols. Um, he presented on the Neuroscience of Chiropractic at Pain Brain Summit, and I'll, I still look back to that conversation and think, you think you know a lot, and then you talk to Dr. Kelly and you realise you are still a novice, and, um, and, and I love that about you, that you still speak with, just, with such humility, which is why, even though you have been so successful and you still speak with amazing humility, what does having written so many books, what, does, what, what has it meant to you personally to do this? And how has your career changed? What do patients think with your level of authority or expertise? Does, does this impact your practice at all? And again, come back to what it has meant for you to get that genius out of the, out of the mind and onto the page. Well, I think it did. I think it was, I had, I had these thoughts. So it was nice to be validated that someone else. I, I've been told by people that this is, this is not a book for the lay people. It's too complicated, but it, it, and it may be, but it was, you know, I just had to get it out. So that's what I was thinking about. Um, but it absolutely, I, and, and we were talking earlier off camera about, you know, you're writing your books and encouraging other chiropractors. And I think absolutely anybody who's been in practice for 10 plus years has, could write a book mm -hmm. as a chiropractor. They have, they have knowledge. They have, they all, we all have our unique skill sets and, 
you know, I, I see chiropractors show me stuff all up, I've never heard of seeing, you know, that's amazing. So we all have special things. And if we put it out there, you know, it's an interesting world. If you, if you have knowledge, there will, people will come seek you out for the knowledge. I mean, one of the things uh, I found out about my brain, and this was after the fact I, I wrote this book is that I had a mold infection shortly after I, I mean, just a couple, two or three months after I published this, I had a clairvoyant. I was at a seminar for Academy for Anti-Aging. This guy came, you know, I was talking at his booth. He goes, I got to tell you, Dr. Miller, you have, you have a mold in, infection in your sinuses. And he goes, he goes, yeah, in fact, it's in your first and second molar on the right side. And I'm like going, yeah. <laughs> But he's telling me all this stuff and he's going, well, no, you really, you need to go to this www.survivingmold.com and you need to take this visual contrast test as a 92% correlation to a mycotoxin lab test and um, all this stuff. And I'm just going, yeah, right, right, right. Okay, whatever. And then uh, later, Dr. Jill Carnahan, who's a, a medical doctor, she does this lecture on mold and mycotoxins and like everything this guy told me was true. So I, I tested myself and, and sure enough, I did have a mold infection. Then I remember now where I probably got, I probably had it for 10 years. Ooh. And um, because I got a sinus infection and I just couldn't get rid of it. I had to take three rounds of antibiotics. I didn't take an antibiotic in, you know, who knows, 10 years or something. So that should have been like a, an alarm bell going off in my head, but I really wasn't, had no awareness of mold. It's a big now. Now then, I would say nine out of 10 patients that come to me have mold infections. So it's just like, I think because I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I always say every day, you know, God, send me people I can help. So I think because you have a knowledge, so we all have that. So if you, may, you say that prayer every day, you can almost be assured who makes an appointment that you have a skill set and knowledge that you can help that person. Otherwise, they wouldn't be coming to see you. So we have to, uh, some, some patients will push us further in our knowledge and other things, but uh, that's how I look at it. But so we've, you know, got educated on the mold and I would just uh, put it out there to the doctors that they need to start looking for this. Anybody has a chronic brain problem and a nervous system problem, but that they may have a mold because 24% of the population has a HLA genotype that makes them very susceptible to mold and they don't mount a good immune system uh, response against it. And the concomitant bacteria that with the mold will actually overactivate the microglia in the brain and it will kill the neurons and literally your brain will atrophy. I have a patient who we do something called NeuroQuant, and he is at seventh in the seventh percentile in his gray matter. Okay, I mean, there's you know, that's not very good, and he's still walking and talking, but he's not very not very well. But no. so it's amazing how our brain can continue to function with a lot of volume, and we see that. And I would like to say about that is. Every day we've seen probably seen an x-ray of somebody with this horrible scoliosis or these huge bone spurs and their foramen are like, you can't even see how in the world does a nerve get through there and functioning. And they're like, yeah, I got a little soreness here. And then you see someone who has a perfect curve, good structure, and they got this excruciating back pain. So that there's not a, there's not a hundred percent correlation between structure and function. So uh, that's what I would say about the brain. So for people out there or some of this, so they could have brain atrophy, they can still potentially get neuroplastic changes because we'll have someone who's had a horrible stroke. They've lost, you know, they've, they've destroyed. I mean, half their brain is, is practically gone and they can't move their arm, you know, the spastic paralysis. And we had a patient that's so cool, but she, she started moving her arm but she had to turn her head to that side to get that arm to work initially because that neuroplasticity was piggybacking on all these signals to her neck muscles to regrow a communication system to her arm. So the, the brain can find a way if we can, if we can keep putting sensory input into it and um, it'll, it'll find a way. 
Absolutely, that's a profound aspect of chiropractic and the change that we can get. Before we come to, to the end of it, again, I, I love talking with him. There's always so much going on in my mind every time you speak. But before we get to the end of this conversation, when you mentor people, you, you alluded to it earlier that, you know, you, you might highlight, start with this piece of technology and then you'll give them a step-by-step -step process. How has, again, from the framework of being in practice, having a model in the book reflecting that model, how then has everything you have done to study, to learn, then to practice and then to write that book, um, how, is, how is all of the knowledge banking that they're going through the writing process contribute to then being able to mentor others and provide a structured framework to deliver more concrete education? Yeah, well, I think it's a learning process and it, it makes you look at things and say, you know, why am I, why I do that or why, why should I do that? Or uh, so it's, it's changed for me. I've changed, totally changed the way of practice. I mean, I don't, I, what I do today is nothing like what I did even a year ago. I've made huge changes. So taking, uh, when I did more education. So basically I had a very, saving your brain is a very global approach. So it's uh, to, you know, that people can do kind of a common sense approach really when you do things. But um, when we start studying functional neurology, there are very specific things we can do. You know, we could take somebody and we can do a master cervical left or a master cervical right, and we can do a ilium left, let me right on the side and just kind of rock them, sock them, go through and kind of go through a protocol and not think, or we may be more specific. So um, we might want to be more specific about our delivery. And I would um, encourage chiropractors to think about their adjustment that it's just not the spinal, but it's also what they're trying to do and learn a little bit about the hemispheric. I would really, uh, I'm, I'm a big admirer of uh, Dr. Malilo and, um, you know, he, he was on it and it's, you know, science is proving, you know, his, his theories today. And in our delivery of the chiropractic adjustment to one side or the other could have a more positive effect on the brain and nervous system. So just little things like that. Um, that we can all, that every chiropractor can start, you know, thinking more about brain. And really, I think we have been, if you go back on the history of chiropractic, chiropractic was used for health, immune system response, um, chronic diseases, all uh, enhanced, all these kind of things, all these miracles were because we were changing things and our knowledge back then was thought we okay we had a pinched nerve and we, we were relieving the pressure on there we know but there's lots of other things happening the mechanoreceptors and but we're actually when we adjust we have you know different things parts of the brains are popping off in functional mri and, and and acupuncture i would love to be if chiropractic schools could get functional MRI, all have functional mris so there'd be some amazing studies on there because acupuncturists have done that but in you're going to see different systems lighting up and awakening by different types of adjustments. Then we know that, you know, yeah. So I, I think it, it, it opens up so many uh, more uh, ways that we can study the brain and nervous system with chiropractic. And it's, a, it's, it's an exciting time for chiropractic uh, because of the, the brain-based research there. Uh, I think it's, as I said, Dr. Kelly, it's always so great to speak with him. And you, anyone uh, as you listen to this as you watch this and, and you, you you realize this, this man is a wealth of knowledge uh if you have the opportunity to mentor with him if you you know reach out and and get an opportunity to grow in your neuroscience of chiropractic your functional medicine approach to chiropractic it's going to be a gift to your your, your patients to your your development as a chiropractor you've got to grab these books if you're interested in the neuroscience of chiropractic and you do not have that you have not got a full understanding of of what is possible through brain-based chiropractic, through you know the uh, whole approach to care, um, this is only a small section. Uh, you've, you've got another book there, um, Dr. Kelly. Hold that up for me because we we're talking about that before we got on. Um, he's, while he's only got a contributing chapter, again, this, he, he, he's this is a book. Uh, I just have a chapter in here. There's like 30 different doctors in here. I think these are all, and these are all chiropractors, so yeah. they're all talking about their thing. This was uh, Bruce Lipton. It's called wake up the happy brain so there's all different approaches so 
there's an opportunity. If you want to start with a chapter, you could probably do something this with somebody and then grow into a book. But we all, every every DC out there, you got a book in you. So write it. You have heard it. That's awesome. So as we wrap up, Dr. Kelly, I, I'm going to do something a little bit different rather than talk about you know, books or anything like that. 41 years of clinical experience. If, if To close here, if you could have told yourself something from all your experience, your wisdom, your knowledge and understanding now, and you could have got, given yourself in a time capsule that message 41 years ago, what message would you send your younger self to share now with the chiropractic community as we close off here? Well, I would definitely get into functional neurology that is i think that's you know that's it took me uh, 38 years or 37 years or something of that to get there and when i see i have people like kyle daigle who's in lake charles louisiana uh brandon crawford he's down in uh austin texas these guys are like 35 36 years old these are world class i'm humble because they make me look like uh, a first first day in school chiropractic student because their knowledge base is so amazing and because they've done this they lived it they've got the ten thousand hours they've they and they started when they were in school so um you know i was 60 plus to start this so anybody out there can start learning at any age and uh, i would encourage that because you're going to see so many more positive changes. And in today's world, there's so much anxiousness, so much depression, so much insomnia, ADHD, autism on the rise, uh, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's on the rise. So there, there's a, a lot of people that need our help. Agreed. And functional neurology, the chiropractic brain-based brain approach to care is, is absolutely groundbreaking and, and life-changing. Dr. Kelly, as always, as I said, at any time I get an opportunity to speak, I'm so grateful. I'm, I'm always excited because I think more deeply every time you give me an idea and a plant that seeds. So I'm grateful for you, grateful for you taking the time out. And I know everybody having watched and, and listened to this is now already saying, I've got another level yet to go and you will evoke that growth in me. So thank you. I appreciate you. Appreciate all that you do. You're an amazing, amazing human being and chiropractor. Incredible servant. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me, Dr. Marcus. It's always nice to talk to you.